All right, so here is one of these rate in, rate out problems, mixing problems, concentration problems, whatever you want to call it. Um, as you can see, it's a bit of a mouthful. It takes a while to write that all down on the board. We'll try to squeeze in the solution with the room that we have. Should work. So let's review the scenario. We've got a 10 liter tank, something like the one we drew over there. Uh, in the tank is five liters of salt solution at a concentration of one gram per liter. And we're gonna add some salt solution at a concentration of three grams per liter. Um, that's gonna flow in at a rate of two liters per minute. Um, and then we're gonna also have some solution flowing out and we wanna figure out the amount of salt in the tank at any given time. Um, so you gotta be careful with these. Make sure you get all the information straight. Watch out for misleading things. Um, there's one slightly misleading bit here. Um, it's a 10 liter tank. Oh, yellow is done. Okay, yes, it's a 10 liter tank. Um, but more to the point, there's five liters of solution in there. So when we're looking for what's the volume, right? What's the relevant volume here? Well, the volume of the tank isn't so relevant uh, other than it should be at least as much as the amount of solution you want to put in, right? The, the important value here for that volume V is the amount of solution, not the size of the tank. It's good to keep that in mind, okay? Um, so the initial amount of salt, X of zero, right? X naught, if you like, is how much? Well, at time zero, we have five liters of solution uh, at a concentration of one gram per liter. So one gram per liter times five liters gives me five grams, right? I have five grams of, of solution initially. All right, now there are a couple of simplifying assumptions that we make in these problems just to make sure they're actually solvable. One is this instant mixing, right? So this, this is an assumption that isn't really physical, but it guarantees that we have uniform concentration, right? It's basically saying that we want to make sure that the concentration on one side of the tank is the same as the concentration on the other side of the tank, um, because if we don't have that, then it, how do we actually model the, you know, how do we figure out the concentration um, that's coming out, right? It's, it gets much, much more complicated, and we get something that is far too complicated for us to solve with the techniques that we have. So we make this assumption Maybe it's not valid, but it's, it's an approximation we're going to make just to make sure we can get a solution. Um, the other assumption, and this is one that we can occasionally drop to make things more interesting, but you'll notice that the rate of flow in and the rate of flow out, they match, right? That guarantees that the amount of liquid stays constant, right? The amount of solution, right? The volume stays constant. Um, if those two values don't match up, then the volume becomes a function of T, and you've got to treat that with more care, right? You've got to watch out um, for that. There's going to be dependence on T there. That's going to give you a more difficult differential equation to solve. All right. With all that out of the way, let's see if we can solve this. So what do we know? We need, first of all, what is the rate in? Okay. Let's think about that. The rate in for our problem, okay, let's call that R in is, so the concentration coming in, three grams per liter, times the rate at which that solution is flowing in, which is two liters per minute, right? So that gives me a rate of six grams per minute coming in. What about the rate going out? Well, there you've got to be a little bit more careful, right? The rate going out depends on the concentration that you currently have in the tank. So what is the concentration in the tank? Well, it's the amount of salt in the tank, X of T, divided by the amount of solution in the tank, right? The amount of liquid. And that's where we've got to be careful. It's not 10 liters, it's five liters. Multiply by the two liters per minute, and we get 2 over 5 x of t, and this would be 5 grams, or x grams over 5 liters, so grams per liter times liters per minute, and we get, again, grams per minute for that. Okay, 
Now we have our differential equation, right? What we get is the following. We get that dx dt is the rate in, which is 6, minus the rate out, 2 over 5 x of t. Okay. So that's the linear differential equation. Also happens to be separable. Um, you might find it convenient maybe to multiply both sides by 5 just to get rid of the fractions. So 5, um, oops, 5 dx dt is 30 minus 2x of t. So 5 over 30 minus 2x is equal o times dx is equal to dt. Okay, so we, we integrate minus 5 over 2 times the natural log, 30 minus 2x is equal to simply, well, t, possibly plus some constant. Standard routine for this, right? Uh, multiply both sides by minus 2 over 5. We use the e to the c, we write that as a different constant to incorporate the absolute value there, and we get um, 30 minus 2x is equal to some constant, which we might call c, times e to the minus 2 over 5t. Okay? Almost there. We want to solve for x in this thing, and we also want to figure out what that value of c is, right? So let's see, we're running short on space. I think we got just enough room right here in the middle. Um, so now we put in that uh, x of 0, right? So x of 0 is 5. So what does that tell me? That tells me that 30 minus 2 times 5 is equal to, well, c times 1, right? OK, so c is equal to 20. Good. So I can, uh, I can work that out, divide everything by 2 there. Move the x over, so we get this. We get x of t is going to be 15 minus 10 e to the minus 2 over 5 t. Okay? And this is exactly what we're looking for. This right here gives me the amount of salt in the tank as a function of time.